Hey guys, Richard Oldner here. Welcome to the channel and thanks for watching the video. You know what makes a Turbo LS even better? Nitrous. In this video, I'm going to show you what happens when we add nitrous to a turbocharged 5.3 liter LS. I'm going to show you what happens to power. I'm going to show you what happens to air fuel. I'm going to show you what happens to the boost pressure. But you're going to ask Richard, why can't we just crank up the boost? To illustrate what happens when we combine nitrous and boost, really two of my favorite things, let's take a look when I did exactly that on a 5.3 liter LS application. This particular LS was supplied by the guys at Strictly Performance, and it was a 5.3 liter, kind of a boost ready application. We'll go ahead and take a look at everything that went into that combination. Normally I would show you what happened with our NA combination, but we were already well into turbo testing on this thing, so I don't have the NA combination, but we're taking a look at the comparison between boost and nitrous anyway. So this was a 5.3 liter. It was a stock block, stock crank. It had Gen 4 rods. It had cast pistons, but they were hard anodized. And we also obviously had plenty of ring gap to run our nitrous and boost with. The way that the guys from Strictly Performance provided this, it was provided with a set of K-Tech ported 706 heads. We had BTR springs on it. And for this test, we had a Comp LST, which is one of their low shock technology camshafts. That cam offered a 605-610 lift split, a 231-237 degree duration split, and 115 degree lobe separation angle. We had a fast LSXR intake manifold on it and 102 millimeter throttle body, which means that this was a good combination. It had ported heads, albeit it wasn't like a full port job, but the KTEC stuff works pretty well. We had a good intake manifold on it. We had a good size camshaft in it, and we ran it with our single turbo setup which included a Precision Turbo 7675. It was a CEA double throwdown turbo, which could supply as much as 1,200 horsepower on our combination. We had the stock uh, truck manifolds feeding our custom Y-pipe. We had two Turbo Smart wastegates on it, and they had both had seven pound springs hooked up. We had no, uh, or we did have a wastegate controller on a manual one with it one and a half turns going to both gates. We had our Procharger air to water intercooler on this, and this was run on E85. So run basically in single turbo application with our 5.3 liter, our cammed and headed and intake manifold 5.3. This was this combination made 674 horsepower and 619 foot pounds. So this was at a peak boost of just 6.25 pounds. We had as much as 6.7 or 6.8 pounds near the torque peak, but the curve actually fell off owing to our mechanical or manual wastegate controller. So the boost fell off and had a falling boost curve. Now let's take a look at what happened when we added nitrous to the combination. We added a Zex wet kit. And you can see, boom, right up to 800 horsepower, no problem. Peak torque at the spike was 766 foot-pounds. You can see we're activating this thing at about 5,000 RPM, and we start seeing it uh, at about 5,500. Nice flat curve hovering right at about 800 horsepower the whole way there. We had a good air fuel curve. We're going to take a look at that, and we're going to take a look at the effect on boost and everything that happened when we added the nitrous. Again, single fogger supplying both nitrous and fuel to our kit and we had a 46 nitrous jet and a 28 fuel jet because we were supplying the the fuel pressure from the the EFI system to the jet so we had plenty of fuel flow plenty of nitrous flow and obviously easy 800 horsepower and you can see it just did the same thing that it does on an NA combination added added power basically everywhere as soon as we had the thing activated. Now let's take a look at the boost curves. Now that we've taken a look at the power gains offered by adding the Zex Wet EFI Nitrous Kit to our turbocharged 5.3 liter, let's see what happened to the boost curves because this obviously also has an effect on the ultimate power output when we add the nitrous. The nitrous by itself obviously is definitely going to add power. You release the free oxygen molecules from the nitrous, it adds power. But as we can see here, it also had effect on what the power production was because of the change in boost. So this is our boost curve offered by our turbo 5.3 liter. We had the Comp LST camshaft, uh, the ported KTEC 706 heads and the fast intake manifold on our Strictly Performance 5.3 liter. And then we had the 76 millimeter single precision turbo with the Procharger intercooler. And the most important thing on this is 
well, there's two things really, the size of the turbo, so when it can spool all the way up to the desired boost level, and then our form of control. Now we had a manual wastegate controller. This would be much flatter and smoother, the curve would be, if we had like the TC1 electronic boost controller or other kind of electronic controller that would keep regulating the boost pressure. So as soon as the turbo would spool up, and this 76 millimeter was pretty good size for our 5.3 liter, but if we had an electronic controller, this boost curve would, could essentially be flat. As you can see, it's not, and that's a function of the manual controller and the effect that the back pressure has on this boost curve. So you see we started out at less than 5.7 pounds, 5.6 pounds. It rose to a peak of 6.8 and then hovered fairly close to 6.75 and then started falling off. Now we got all the way down to under six pounds out here at 6,600 RPM. And that's with our single turbo kit. But here's what happened when we added our nitrous kit to this. You can see it's the same everywhere until we activated the nitrous. And as soon as we activated the nitrous, not only did we get extra power added by the nitrous itself, but we also got a change in boost. So the boost jumped up to a peak of 7.4 pounds. Not a huge change, but enough where we would definitely see a change in power. But then like as it did before, we start seeing a, a dropping boost curve. So even though we had a peak of 7.4 pounds, it fell off to... 6.8 pounds of boost, so only back down to what the peak was before we added the nitrous. So this is something to consider and something that also might be cured if you wanted to have the exact same boost curve. If we had an electronic controller, the electronic controller might be able to stabilize the boost and have it be the same with and without nitrous. But as soon as you activate the nitrous, you're gonna get a dramatic increase in power and a dramatic increase in exhaust gas flow and also a change in back pressure. So I don't know, even with a manual or with an electronic wastegate controller, if you'd be able to get this thing to be like perfectly the same every time, you might see a slight spike and then it might control it. But it would be an interesting test, maybe a second test with a, an electronic wastegate controller to find out if we could get the boost curves to be nice and flat and exactly the same with and without nitrous. Now let's take a look at even more information. Now that we've taken a look at both the power gains offered by the nitrous and the change in boost, let's take a look at one more thing. And this is actually something unlike the change in boost, which would tend to add power to the combination. Let's take a look at what happened to the air fuel curve. And this would actually tend to reduce power a little bit. So this was our air fuel curve offered by our turbo combination. We allowed it to get it to lean out as much as 12.2 to one, as we can see out here. For most of the run, it was in the mid to high 11s, which is perfectly safe for the kind of running E85 and a fairly low boost and it was intercooled. So it was more, and, and even 12.2 is more than in the safe range. But what I want to show you is what happened when we added our nitrous. Here's what happened to our air fuel curve when we added our nitrous. You can see it got a lot richer and that's not surprising. The nitrous kit obviously supplies its own additional fuel. And when you run nitrous, whether it's on an NA motor or in this case on a turbo motor, you have to make sure that you tune the combination. Now we would want to keep this thing, you know, it, ideally the air fuel curve would have been exactly the same between the two runs. And we could do that. We could go in and tune that and we would want to take away additional fuel when the nitrous is activated because I'd like to see this thing, you know, at 11.7 or 11.8 with both combinations, both with the nitrous and without. And we could go in and tune that. We didn't do that on this case. So it probably lost a little bit of power from this thing, from the air fuel on the nitrous being down below 11 to 1. That's actually richer, much richer than I would want it to be. And that's the test that we did. And that's the way that it turned out. So I would go in and we could tune this and we could take fuel out on the nitrous hit. What I probably would do is we would start out by um, changing the nitrous jet and or the fuel pressure going to the nitrous. We could do both of those and they both would take away fuel. And then we could obviously tune it with the Holly system and take additional fuel away if we wanted to do that. It would be better, obviously, as a direct back-to-back -back test to have the air fuel be exactly the same. Now, we also took away two degrees of timing when we added the nitrous, so that's going to affect power as well. But this is very important. Make sure that when you're doing this, if you're adding nitrous to the combination, now this would make 
make maybe help it be a little bit safer. But what I wanted, what ideally what we would do is make sure that the air fuel was exactly the same so we could get a direct comparison. Now we saw big power gains and we saw a nice smooth power curve. So obviously all of that was working out. But if you really wanted to do this, you'd need to make sure that the air fuel and time was exactly the same. And I want to show you one final thing, because obviously since this is a turbo motor, and we were running, you know, making lots of power. This was our turbo combination. This is what happened when we added the nitrous. But the other option for you to do rather than add nitrous, and because we have enough turbo to support basically any kind of power level, any kind of realistic power level that we would want to run. The other thing that we could do, obviously, is we could just add more boost. So we went from 6.8 to 8.1 pounds, and then to equal the power output offered by the nitrous, we went up to just right at about 10 pounds. And so we were right at near 800 horsepower in this combination. The thing is, if you look at the turbo combination rather than the nitrous combination, you see that we made more power everywhere by just running about 10 pounds of boost and making 800 horsepower. Now you, we could go up to that, but then the other thing that we could do is we could keep going up and boost to whatever that turbo would support and then add nitrous. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, I think this video clearly showed adding nitrous to a turbo is not the same as ever. Like adding a shot of whiskey to another shot of whiskey. Now I showed you what happens when we add nitrous to a turbo. I showed you what happens to the air fuel curve to the boost curve, and ultimately to the power curve. Now on the air fuel side, adding a wet fogger system that combines nitrous and fuel to an already rich mixture from the turbo setup is going to need to be tuned. If you want to optimize your nitrous turbo combination, figure on a little bit of tuning. But I also showed you what happens to the boost curve. When we added nitrous to our turbo setup, it added more boost. That means we had power from our turbo, additional power from the nitrous, and a little bit more power from the added boost. Again, nothing but awesome. And finally, power adders. Power adders are awesome. Running a turbo on a naturally aspirated motor, bunch more power. Adding nitrous on top of that, even more power. And the great thing is it's so easy to add even more power. We can either turn up the boost, or add more nitrous. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.